Welcome to the Medical Insider Podcast, where we highlight real life solutions to your health challenges, incorporate new technology and proven solutions from the past with a healthy dose of common sense while resisting the pitfalls of idiopathic classifications and economically based medical doctrine. This is your host, Dr. Thomas Santucci. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Santucci. Today, we're going to take a little break from really the heavy-duty functional medicine stuff, and that's really important. But about seven years ago, I started a comic book, and the purpose of the comic book was to kind of encapsulate and try to get ideas through to people that couldn't get it as a head-on collision. I was talking to another functional medicine doctor, a good one. I was telling him some of the things we were doing in our clinic, and he was amazed. I mean, he was like, wow, you know, you're really making some pretty big claims. And so there's an old scientific statement. It's kind of a draggy kind of statement that says, you know, with big claims comes the big requirement for proof. And he says, it it really sounds like fiction. And I thought about it and I was like, wow, it kind of does sound like fiction to be a informed generalist. To be an informed generalist means that you have to get control of three or four subspecialties and you have to do what the specialists do almost as well as they do. And from a generalized understanding, you may understand it better than they do. So I sort of scratched my head and I went home and I started a comic book. So this is it. So I hope you enjoy So functional medicine in a fictitious world, how a group of make-believe aliens decided to take matters into their own hands and eliminate sickness and disease. Cast against their planet's powerful subcasts and health cartels that claim dominion over the approved solutions, they discovered a new source of healing that proved to be more effective than anything their corrupt overseers had offered. This was pre-COVID, by the way. And in those days, we were talking about a general decline in health, you know, and so we were really talking about the chronic acute illnesses. I have to write another thing after this and basically do a post-COVID one, but that's next. Chapter one, the world I'm going to tell you about is so bizarre and, and strange that I myself have trouble believing in it after all these years. If it were not for the pit in my stomach and the overwhelming feeling of disquiet, I might have thought I had imagined. Indeed, that's what they're saying to me. If any of this were true, the cartels would have been the ones to find it, or I would be rich for finding these solutions. Sadly, this is not true. Our planet has become sick. Our factories and our geocars have eliminated part of the protective layer of our environment. The waste from our manufacturing and herds of Brahma beasts have infiltrated our water and farming lands. Poisons from metals and infections are common. Global heating and loss of key atmospheric elements are widespread. We now have the means to control our planting centers worldwide. We rely almost solely on maize fruit and geograin vegetation to feed our planet. We have altered the basic nutritional composition of these foods so they no longer align with our genetic coding. A third of our people can no longer eat the food without becoming sick. The cartels, consisting of some of the richest citizens of the tech, pharma, and med cartels, have stepped forward to produce more food and better access to the system. After all, these are the people who have already transformed our world from the outdated inefficient practices of the past. Avtech Mod was the new religion. It encompassed our overall belief that the new technologies were going to deliver us to a future where we controlled the variables of existence and were rewarded for our future focus and podless devotion to achievement. The cartels each had their own version of ad tech mom, mod, or ATM, but each uniformly required the unquestioning adherence to the code. The cartels help Amartians believe ATM by carefully shaping Bitfeed and eGestalt so that each could digest the massive tech foe delivered to each of our portals each hour. The big cartels each had their own version of tech shaping, but each helped shape the population's cognate appropriately for the control of our stream. Parenthetically, this was done about seven years ago before this is actually how things turned out. Chapter two, the blight. It happened slowly. Most Amartians were busy with the activities and didn't really notice the change. After all, the system required all out focus to achieve the goals of Avtech modernization. After a time, families began to notice that the females were producing fewer healthy offspring and had less energy to raise their podlings. The mech tests began to show other symptoms. 
loss of motivation and mental capability. They had trouble remembering things and eventually succumbed to the same loss of energy the pod mothers had experienced. Then regular Amartians began to report strange, strange collections of symptoms that could not reasonably occur. Pain, fatigue, psychological failures, loss of memory and mental control leading to premature aging and even death in some cases. By 10, 16 cycles, anti-tagged modernization, as it was referred to, was actively interfering with the Amartian system. It even got a formal name with a medical billing code. It became ATM for short. Amartian physiology. Every first-year health summoner knows that Amartian physiology has four equally important control centers, which must be taken into consideration when the unlikely event that we become sick occurs. Sometimes somatomes are the primary elements of health, making up our mind-body-spirit centers and accomplish our integrated temporal existence. Sanguines provide internal nutrients to transfer energy to fuel body function. Cogens perceive and react to the world around with a network of communication cells which line our bodies. Orthotones make up the mass of our bodies. They locomote us and carry out the body's function. Ethereons receive and tune into the frequency of our world and our creator. Avtec Mod began to focus on Amartian physiology. They separated the four elements in order to analyze them. Health summoners became somatome specialists, or SS, that spent all their cycles examining just one of the four elements of health. It is thought that the bodies of our ancestors turned over in their graves that day. Amartian health care fractionated into physical, biochemical, neuro, and energetic disciplines, each with their own set of rules and mutual distrust of each other. Millions of talents have been spent to accomplish the specialization, and it became the new reality. Because disruptions of sanguines and cogens showed up first and were the most debilitating of the blight, the health summoners of these SS groups insinuated themselves as the caretakers of the new health summoner order. They formed an association, quickly growing until they had amassed subcartel power and authority. They made the rules for caring for any system who showed any citizen who showed symptoms problems with sanguine or cogent issues. They determined rules of acceptable knowledge, as well as the type of clinical testing and level of care that was acceptable for its member health summoners to provide. Importantly, they also declared what conditions were not acceptable to treat, essentially labeling large parts of the blight uncurable, losing the battles. Aftec Mod did not do well against the blight. More and more people were suffering from this counter ATM or CAT effects that were preventing them from living in ATM bliss. Sanguine researchers found changes in the duplication capability of their sanguines. Sanguines, which normally replaced themselves as their predecessors wore out or were damaged, began to replicate without reason or limit. Orthotone health summoners lamented over poor somatic conditions of their patients. Robust physical health and flexibility were becoming rare. The Cogen SS Corp. had recently taken to surgically removing cogens as their new standard of practice, so they, among the somatic specialists, didn't see much change. Ethereans lamented a fundamental shift in higher energy potentials in our species. Many had thought we had lost our way. Many Amartians were dissatisfied with the poor results and lack of decent plan to counter the blight, but disparaging health practitioners was considered personally awkward and inappropriate. Criticizing awkwards, criticizing cartels could be considered dangerous. Despite this poor performance against the blight, Avtec Mod worked steadily with the Stream Guild to ensure that only sensibly chosen information was transmitted to the Amartian population. So when I wrote this, I didn't realize that the information changes and a lot of the medical changes were going to like follow my comic book quite so closely. When we actually got the information restrictions during the COVID era, it was very 1984-ish. Without having an opinion plus or minus or for or against the immunizations, the big thing that was really, really relevant at that period was that there was no information. So when we went to understand, you know, what is the growth pattern of this virus? What's the etiology? Meaning, where did it come from? What's the, the best way to really attack this? There was no information. Later, when we looked at the statistics, the mortality statistics, they weren't available either. What happened to most people is they either were 
you know, kind of harping the company story, or they didn't have an opinion at all. From a responsible doctor point of view, it was really necessary to be very, very limited on what we shared with our patients because there wasn't any data. What's happening now is we're investigating, and I think in a, in a positive way, what the numbers actually were, what we were dealing with, and what the specific intervention was. A lot of Monday morning quarterbacking, and I don't want to engage in that, but I do want to talk about the free flow of information within medicine. And that's something that I think that COVID has brought to light and really the whole, you know, can you get information from the internet subject? When I finished my medical training, I literally threw out $3,000 worth of very nice medical books because I assumed 25 years ago or more that I would get all of my information off the internet. After all, it was the most current. The body of knowledge was doubling every three years. My medical books wouldn't have been valid. And so I can just refresh using the new information. I didn't realize that the new information would be politicized and really you know, segmented and eliminated to such an extent that um, I probably should have kept my medical books from 25 years ago. So we're going to dwell deeper into kind of the big picture political implications, but much more from a what do you do about it and what can you do to preserve your own health? Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Medical Insider Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you visit medicalinsider.com. Go ahead and sign up for these episodes, get them sent directly to your inbox, do us a favor and give us a like.